G'day Big Lab Bible, I'm Luke. And I'm Brooke, and we're living the adventure. So we are currently full-time travellers. We left in January of 2022. We decided to do the Big Lap um, kind of after COVID hit when we saved money to do a big overseas trip. And it's just the two of us travelling. Originally we had planned to do an overseas travel, but as always COVID and lockdowns, we couldn't do that. So we decided what else could we do? And the next best option was to take a gap year and travel across Australia and see our own backyard. So we're currently sitting, as you can see behind us, we have the beautiful Uluru. Uh, we decided that we were gonna go up the centre at last minute. Uh, originally, we were gonna go straight along the coast and do the Nullarbor, but we decided we wanted to chase some warmer weather and the wind was an absolute killer down south. So we're up the centre, we've just done Cooper Pedy and now we're at the um, Uluru National Park. Uh, we are traveling north and we're going to be making our way to Darwin after this. Uh, we probably spend maybe a month or two in uh, Northern Territory and we're actually uh, planning to do a couple of weeks or a month in uh, Bali. After Darwin we'll be leaving the Northern Territory and heading to WA on the west side and heading down the coastline making our way back around down south. So we're traveling in a 2014 uh, Toyota Hilux dual cab. Uh, we built a canopy on the back and with a rooftop on the top of it. Uh, so we're not towing, which is really good. We can get to all the remote locations um, without struggling. And we still have all the luxuries. So we're, we're pretty well equipped, I think. We usually try and find a free camp. There's some really nice locations you can buy at free camps and bonuses they're relatively cheap or they're free in general. Although we do stay in a caravan park once a week or once a fortnight just to catch up on some washing and to have a good shower and just a little bit of luxury really. We do um, kind of splurge a little bit and stay at an Airbnb every now and then. We've stayed at a couple of really nice ones. We, we just can't help ourselves. There's some really nice places around here and I'll quickly have a look at Airbnb and see that there's a really nice one around so we'll just snag it for a night or two and, and that's kind of kind of how we go. So my favourite campsite we've stayed at was a free camp in Tasmania, it was Bay of Fires. We stayed two nights there, they've got beachfront uh, camping. It is free so it's always nice when you can find a free camp that's free. So we stayed two nights, we were able to snag a spot and it was just really nice seeing the beach, it was really calm. Uh, we couldn't actually decide on one, so we both had one. So Brook was the Bay of Fires, and my favourite was uh, a lookout down south. The name of the place is called Ocean View Lookout. It's just south of Mount Gambia, right on the South Australia and Victorian border. Um, so basically, it was just a car park, and we read on one of the Wiki Camps reviews um, that there was a little side track. And if you went down the side track, you come out in this nice little cliffside spot, and we did and we found it and it was bloody awesome. We we had the whole place to ourselves and you, you perched up right on the cliff and I couldn't um, I couldn't find anything better in the area for that and that was probably my favourite so far. I mean, we're only a couple months into our trip so that could change again, but so far from where we're at, that was our two favourites. So uh, one of our favourite places, a um, place that's very, very underrated and we, uh, really aren't sure why is uh, Tasmania as a whole we're, we're gonna say Tasmania just because it's when we started talking about our land or our first stop is going to Tasmania as we left Sydney and within a week we were in Tasmania it was kind of our first major stop they people kind of looked at us and they didn't even really understand why we we're going to Tasmania so that is kind of why I'm gonna say Tasmania if you are planning on doing a big trip put Tasmania on your list because it is so underrated and we absolutely loved our time there. Um, now a place we wouldn't go back to. It's actually Adelaide, Adelaide City. We can't see ourselves ever wanting to really revisit or fly down there for a weekend like we do with some other cities. Um, we stayed four nights and we ventured around. We were going to extend if we felt like we needed to see more of the area. 
but I'm not sure if we just weren't looking in the right spots, but we just didn't really enjoy our time and we were happy to leave. It wasn't a vibe. Yeah. I don't know if we were comparing it too much to Melbourne and Sydney and thinking it was a, a bigger city. We just felt like it was just a large town and because it wasn't that city feeling we were looking for. We, we kind of said before we left on the lap that we would explore every city because I know Brooke hasn't explored much of the cities. Um, and I've only done a little bit. Adelaide was one I haven't been to before, so we were definitely going to stop. And yeah, as Brooke said, it was just, it wasn't a vibe. I think I had high expectations where it is a much more quieter city uh, rather than Melbourne and Sydney, which we're kind of used to. Uh, we did stay in Melbourne, which like, I could have spent two weeks there. We spent a week there and we kind of had to tell us that we, we have to move on, otherwise we're just gonna to spend too much time there. So somewhere that we can't wait to go. Uh, now there's a few spots, obviously you can't really sum it up to one place. Um, there's a few things that we've done that would, you know, has been unbelievable. But we, I'm gonna say uh, the southwest coast of WA. It's a place that Brooke and I both haven't been and we both haven't explored before. So we're excited for that. Uh, Brooke's favorite. Really um, looking forward to Esperance. Esperance, yeah. Um, also, I know there's a few spots up the kind of the top end of WA, like Exmouth and even um, Maki Mia. Uh, some places that I've known for quite a long time, but obviously I've, I've never be been able to go to. So this is our chance to go and explore that coast. And as a whole, I think probably the West Coast is gonna be, is, is our major um, location of this trip. A big one too is the Ningaloo Reef. I can't actually wait to get there. Doing the whole diving and and spear fishing thing has got my name on it, so I really can't wait to do that. I don't know if Brooke's keen to do the, the diving, but I think the beaches look pretty nice. Just looking forward to being on the west coast in warmer weather, hence why we kind of went up north now, so we can enjoy that coastline in some warm weather to enjoy swimming in those um, waters and enjoy tanning on the beach and just really taking it all in with the good weather. Uh, there was a couple of places that we were out in like the air peninsula and the york peninsula when it was starting to get pretty cold that i just had to convince myself to go in the water like some places were just so beautiful but it was just that cold that i had to just jump straight in the water otherwise i wasn't going to go in but you come to places like that where you just have to swim for me personally i have to swim there because it looks so amazing so that's kind of why we did go up is for the warmer weather so we do have a little dog, his name is Max and he's a Kelpie. Unfortunately, he did not get to join us on our travels as much as he loves being on the road and loves camping. Uh, it took us a while going back and forth on what was the right decision for us. It does have a lot of limitations, bringing a dog, national parks. If you want to do a day tour and you're out all day, you've got to find someone to look after the dog or the cat. And ultimately we decided that we're only going to do this lap probably once and we wanted to be able to explore everything and not be set back so max is back at home with luke's dad on property and another kelpie friend there and he enjoys himself back at home i think all right it was a big decision for us to leave him at home um, we did do a month in november i believe last year uh, and we kind of did like a test run with the setup as it just got uh, finished and he did come with us for that and he he's such a good travel dog um it's, it is a bit disappointing but like brooke said you know you've got to kind of weigh it up and with the national parks and the day trips it's, it would get too hard with even if brooke and i just want to go out for dinner or something you know if it's a bit warmer you can't just leave him in the car you can't do that so that was kind of how we got to that decision but we do plan on doing some travel with him in the future uh, when we get back we're, we're aiming to get home about no end of November so we'll probably do the whole of December and beyond with with Max. While in Tassie we visited the Lady Baron Falls. Uh, it's a beautiful waterfall. It's about a three hour loop and there's a couple of waterfalls that you get to see. But we were staying at Left of Field campsite and the lady there said there was a sidetrack to kind of shortcut back to the camp. So we thought we found it. I don't think it was the right track we were on. So we continued along the waterfall and tried to find this new track and the track kind of disappeared and started going up what I would like to call a cliff face. 
no track, just kind of rock scrambling um, on all fours and I don't do well with heights and it wasn't really my cup of tea, there was a couple of tears and we did make it through obviously but through my head I was thinking if I do one slide or one slip like that was the end and once we got to the top I had to have a five minute break and just kiss the ground a little bit and just sit there and take it all in that I made it to the top and still alive. <laughs> Uh, a scary and a funny moment, I've, I've got one, is we're in um, another place in Tas Tasmania. We, Brooke woke me up in the middle of the night and we kind of thought we were getting robbed. And uh, it turns out we were just getting attacked by possums. They were like climbing over everything, making a loud ruckus, going for our rubbish. So, that was pretty funny. I actually had to Google what the, what the um, noise was and I originally thought it was a the Tassie Devils, but it wasn't, they were just possums. So my favorite item that I can't live without is um, probably gonna be the Companion Shower. Uh, it's a little lithium shower, instant hot water. I just love the fact that you can, you can literally be anywhere in Australia and have a hot shower. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, like it, it literally, do, it's not even a factor. Uh, we've got the shower tent at the back and just drop the pump straight in the bucket and you got a hot shower, so. It's pretty good after a, you know, if you've done a bit of a walk and you, you've been hot and sweaty all day. Just have a quick rinse before you get into bed. It's, it's a really good feeling. My favourite is my hair dryer and my hair straightener. I told Luke when he was doing the 12 volt setup that I need to be able to run my hair straightener and hair dryer. So I like having a shower at night and no one wants to hop into bed with wet hair. So being able to blow dry my hair before hopping into bed is a big plus for me. <laughs> fund our trip we um, we did use our holiday funds to build the car uh, and purchase it as we didn't actually own it beforehand so we, we bought the car and built it with our holiday money uh, and that was kind of all of our savings and then throughout last year we uh, we built up the more funds to go so we we did walk away with a little bit of money on uh, to actually start the trip but but we do work full time uh, online as we travel, so a bit of holiday mode, a bit of work mode, we try and balance it out. Uh, we do social media, a little bit of YouTube, Instagram, working with companies, sponsorships, keeps the bank nice and topped up so we can enjoy ourselves. Uh, we did talk about getting our bar licenses and doing a bit of that sort of work, but we kind of thought we, we didn't need to. We both work online, so. We, we, did, we have enough money. It was kind of about the experience that was kind of a thing. Um, but at the end, we decided we, we didn't need it. So our biggest expense so far on this trip uh, has been the Tasmanian Ferry. It was $1,500 both ways. So on the way there, we did day sailing and we just got a, a uh, just recliner seats, I think they're an extra $40, just so you have nice recliner seats in a nice quiet room. You get a really nice view of um, the water as well. And then we did the night sailing on the way home, which was much, much better. Uh, we got the cabin, which we paid a little bit extra for, but you basically just slept the entire night and the, uh, the lady on the microphone woke you up and that was it. You basically blinked and you wake up and you're back in uh, on the mainland. So a big expense with doing a lap is obviously fuel. We are a diesel, so we've quite spent a quite a bit of money on diesel and diesel prices have been skyrocketing lately. But at the end of the day, we still find ourselves saving a bit of money compared to living back home in Sydney Definitely. with renting, electricity, gas, um, all the rest of the things that comes with living in a home. So to toss it up, we still prefer living on the road and still save it is money. yeah it's much cheaper for us um we've kind of we've averaged it out some weeks we splurge some weeks we don't but we've kind of averaged it out we spend about 800 dollars a week and that's for everything um some weeks where you know we're not traveling far distances I, I won't fill the car up once in the week but sometimes like now where we've gone from port augusta to Cooper PD, which was like 600 kilometers and then from Cooper PD to Ayers Rock which was another 700 kilometers you're obviously filling up twice in a couple of days so that is kind of where the money's at if you are situating yourself 
in locations where you're staying at a place for a week or two, you know, the, the, the diesel bill really isn't that big. So this was a hard one for us because I researched so much, like I can't even put it into words how much I researched before we left on this trip on just different products and, and things to go and see and, and just everything. So this was a pretty hard question to answer, but I think we've come up with the amount of grey nomads there are compared to the amount of four-wheel drives there and rooftoppers. So I'm going to say like ratio, it's like 90% grey nomads and caravanners where the 10% of the four-wheel drives and rooftoppers you hardly ever see. Uh, honestly, we haven't bumped into that many um, rooftoppers and the ones that we have you know, you kind of don't have enough time to meet them because they're like us and they just um, one day, one or two days and they're off on the next location. Yeah, I would agree. We, we did spend a lot of time YouTubing and reading the Big Lap Bible before we left, uh, following other people on their journey. So I feel like we were pretty well educated on what to expect living on the road, but we haven't met too many people in similar setups to us as, yeah, we... I feel like people who are in the rooftop tent because it's so quick and easy to switch locations uh, we don't stay places very long to meet new people but we have met some good people um, we've met quite a quite a few caravanners that have been amazing people uh, especially even their kids would become friends with their kids and um, Sam and Tristan were our biggest friends that we met in Tasmania. Yeah, we partnered up with them for about two weeks going through Tassie and they were another four drive and rooftop tent. So we we're kind of on the same track. So we enjoyed traveling with other people. It was good. Yeah, it was good traveling with them. So there's one thing that I knew I wanted to do years and years ago. And when we started planning this trip, uh, I was, wasn't doing this trip without doing it. Uh, our biggest splurge was we bought the experience of the uh, Port Lincoln shark dive. So it was a Calypso um, charter. Uh, they basically took us out to the Neptune Islands and they drop a cage in the water. They allowed to drop some burly and try and get the great whites uh, to come and uh, around the cage. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any great whites because they were kind of out of season at the moment. I think at the time it was like 32 days since they seen a great white, which was just unfortunate. Uh, pretty bad timing but we couldn't really control when we we're going to be there but we did get $200 cash back and 50% off if we want to return within the next three years so we'll definitely be doing that even if it is just a plane trip um, I think seeing the great whites up close and personal would just be incredible uh, don't get me wrong it was a really nice day uh, we had a great day on the water nice food nice people uh, I got to do some fishing off the back uh, we, I got to see a Mako, I did persist in the cage and me and one other guy was, were in there for I don't even know how long and we were lucky enough to see a Mako shark so that, it made it worth it. So we both kind of overpacked within the clothes department but in particular I just wanted to mention the Makita jackets. So we did purchase a Makita jacket each, uh, they're a rechargeable jacket for heating so they're really good when you're camping in the cold and out and about uh, but to be honest because we're chasing the warmer weather we haven't pulled them out that much we haven't had a cold time Tassie we pulled them out I think and that's about it really just because we are chasing the warmer weather we didn't really need them that often and we co probably could have went without them to be honest I've used them a few times uh, when I've been fishing but that's pretty much it by lockdown so we said before that we used our uh, overseas money for our car so basically when the lockdown happened we decided that we we're gonna buy a house and instead of buying a house we used that money to uh, buy the car so if it wasn't for COVID I don't think we would have been doing this lap to be honest we probably would have bought a house um, it did kind of restrict us with uh, work as we worked at home so we kind of didn't go anywhere for a long period of time because we would live in Sydney so it was a hot spot so yeah it did it did affect us in in good and bad ways I mean there's nothing good about COVID and honestly it, it's caused so many problems for so many people but for us 
if we didn't if covid didn't happen we wouldn't be standing right sitting right here and doing all this beautiful uh, travel so my biggest tip for anyone that wants to do the lap is is just basically do your research you know plan everything ahead make sure you're future proofing everything you don't want to buy something that you know it seems like a great deal because it's a bit cheaper and then five or six months down the track when you're in the middle of nowhere it fails on you you just don't want that you want to spend the money on the good gear especially when you're planning on living out of whatever uh, situation you got if you're a car or a van um, it doesn't matter you want to get the good stuff if you if you budget out things are going to break and you're going to you're going to find that out the hard way my biggest tip is when it comes to your personal items so toiletries and clothes and shoes just pack less uh, go through it a few times i wish i packed less you can always purchase an extra jumper or an extra pair of shoes or something along the way instead of over packing and just never touching it yeah i can i can agree with that i, I packed a lot what i thought was light i'm literally living out of one football bag i have one football bag and it is still too much clothes for me i haven't even touched the clothes at the bottom of my bag so when you think you've got it a lot enough, go again. And when you think you're light enough again, go again. Seriously, it's it's just something that you don't think about. You think, oh, I'm living on the road. I'm not going to be able to do washing for two weeks. I've got to pack for two weeks. I wear the same clothes every week. Like, you, you're going to do one load of washing a week at least. You go for so, your same outfits. You go a couple of outfits you really like and you just kind of repeat them. And like Luke said, you can, you're can you doing washing. It's no different to being at home. You can do your washing and just pack lighter, lighter in the clothes. And if you are finding that you need a little bit more, you can always just buy a couple of things exactly. on the way. Yeah. I bought a couple of shirts, like just novelty shirts. Um, but that's just kind of, you know, it's saying that you don't need to pack everything because you can buy shirts and jumpers and pants, shoes on the way. Just gonna show you where we're at at the moment. Uh, we said before at Airs Rock. So we're just at the uh, one of the viewing spots here. So we've got the rock over there. Car's sitting pretty here. Brooks looking pretty. Um, just over there, I don't think we can see it. But there's the Olgas just over there somewhere. Uh, that's where we're gonna be heading straight after this. We're gonna head straight to the Olgas. We're just gonna give you a quick little run through of our car. Um, so it's a 2014 Hilux. We've got the UHF at the front running the bull bar. Uh, the cell fire go for the antenna uh, phone reception. Uh, we've got a couple of light bars. We've got the Iron Man light bar and the Steady light bar up there. Uh, also the laser lights up the front. Kitchen side on the passenger side. We've got Bushman's fridge. We love having an upright fridge over a chest fridge. Pull out pantries. Nice and easy. Went with a travel buddy oven as well. And bonus little prep break bench in here. There's a big lap bible. Big lap bible. Always checking this all the time for any tips and places to see along the way. So, this is um, our kind of recovery box. So it's got all the bits and pieces, hose for the water tank, that sort of thing. Uh, moving around. So this is actually a drop down bench. It just folds straight down followed by a little shower tent. Uh, this is a bit of a shed. So it's got all bits and pieces. This is how our dining table fits in there too. So basically just like a little shed kind of box here. Rooftop tent, we went with the Bush Company, the AX27 Alpha. We absolutely love it. It's your bed for 12 months. So you want to get something comfy. You don't want to be thinking about your bed back at home. Definitely not. So quickly, this is our little storage side. We didn't get to do what we wanted to do with it because of weight issues. That's the 12 volt setup. We've got all the red up gear, the red vision, which is really good. And that's kind of what I was talking about, future proofing your stuff. It's the most expensive gear you can get out, but it hasn't failed. Touch wood isn't gonna fail me once this trip. And down on this side is just our towels and our toiletry bags also in here. And I also keep my straightener and my hair dryer down Can't here live too. without it. Can't live without it. Well, that's kind of our, our little um, bathroom. 
So this is my bathroom, this is the shower, this is a companion. That's how big it is, it's in a tiny little bag. So that's all it is. You literally put that anywhere, drop the pump in the bucket, pump. and that is it. And you got instant hot water. So that's it from us guys. We want to thank you for tuning in and thanks for the Big Lap Bible. Uh, we purchased the Big Lap Bible before we even kind of knew about um, our travel stuff that we were going to do. We, we bought it just to kind of have a look at. And here it is with us 12 months later. Uh, it's keeping it in the car. So thanks again guys. Appreciate it for tuning in and we hope you get out there and live the adventure. See you later.